Good morning everyone and happy Tuesday. Today in Because of Winn Dixie, we will be reading chapter 12. So go ahead and get out your books and let's turn to page, oops, skipped over, turn to page 79. All right, and we will get started with chapter 12. All right, here we go. <clears throat> chapter 12. Me and Winn Dixie got to Gertrude's pets so early for my first day of work that the clothes sign was still in the window. But when I pushed on the door, it swung open, and so we went inside. I was about to call out to Otis that we were there, but then I heard music. It was the prettiest music I had ever heard in my life. I looked around to see where it was coming from, and that's when I noticed that all the animals were out of their cages. There were rabbits and hamsters and gerbils and mice and birds and lizards and snakes. And they were all just sitting there on the floor like they had turned to stone. And Otis was standing in the middle of them. He was playing a guitar and he had on skinny pointed toed cowboy boots and he was tapping them while he was playing the music. His eyes were closed and he was smiling. When Dixie got a dreamy kind of look on his face, he smiled really hard at Otis and then he sneezed and then his whiskers went all fuzzy and then he sighed and kind of dropped to the floor with all the other animals. Just then, Gertrude caught sight of Win Dixie. Dog, she croaked and flew over and landed on his head. Otis looked up at me. He stopped playing his guitar and the spell was broken. The rabbit started hopping and the birds started flying and the lizard started leaping and the snakes started slithering and when Dixie started barking and chasing everything that was moving, and Otis shouted, help me. For what seemed like a long time, me and Otis ran around trying to catch mice and gerbils and hamsters and snakes and lizards. We kept on bumping into each other and tripping over the animals. And Gertrude kept screaming, dog, dog. Every time I caught something, I put it back in the first cage I saw. I didn't care if it was the right cage or not. I just put it in and slammed the door. And the whole time I was chasing things, I was thinking that Otis must be some kind of snake charmer, the way he could play his guitar and make all the animals turn to stone. And then I thought, this is silly. I shouted over when Dixie barking and Gertrude yelling. I said, play some more music, Otis. <clears throat> he looked at me for a minute. Then he started playing his guitar and in just a few seconds, everything was quiet. When Dixie was lying on the floor, blinking his eyes and smiling to himself and sneezing every now and then and the mice and the gerbils and the rabbits and the lizards and the snakes that we hadn't caught yet got quiet and sat still. And I picked them up one by one and put them back in their cages. When I was all done, Otis stopped playing. He looked down at his boots. Did they escape from their cages? Oh, I'm sorry, I just totally skipped a part. Go back. <laughs> when I was all done, Otis stopped playing. He looked down at his boots. I was just playing them some music. It makes them happy. Yes, sir, I said. Do they escape from their cages? No, Otis said. I take them out. I feel sorry for them being locked up all the time. I know what it's like being locked up. You do, I said. I have been in jail, Otis said. He looked up at me real quick and then looked back down at his boots. You have, I said. Never mind, said Otis. Aren't you here to sweep the floor? Yes, sir, I told him. He walked over to the counter and started digging through a pile of things. And finally, he came up with a broom. 
Here, he said, you should start sweeping. Only he must have gotten confused. He was holding out his guitar to me instead of the broom. With your guitar, I asked. He blushed and handed me the broom and I started to work. I am a good sweeper. I swept the whole store and then dusted some of the shells. The whole time I worked, when Dixie followed me and Gertrude followed him, flying behind him and sitting on his head and his back and croaking real quiet to herself, dog, dog. When I was done, Otis thanked me. I left Gertrude's pets thinking about how the preacher probably wouldn't like it very much that I was working for a criminal. Sweetie Pie Thomas was waiting for me right out front. I seen that, she said. She stood there and sucked on her knuckle and stared at me. Seen what, I said. I seen all them animals out of their cages and keeping real still. Is that man magic, she asked. Kind of, I told her. She hugged Win Dixie around the neck. Just like this grocery store dog, right? Right, I said. I started walking and Sweetie Pie took her knuckle out of her mouth and put her hand in mine. Are you coming to my birthday party? She asked. I surely am, I told her. The theme is pink, she said. I know it, I told her. I gotta go, she said all of a sudden. I gotta go home and tell my mom about what I seen. I live right down there in that yellow house. That's my mama on the porch. You see her? She's waving at you. I waved at the woman on the porch and she waved back. And I watched Sweetie, Sweetie Pie run off to tell her mama about Otis being a magic man. It made me think about my mama and how I wanted to tell her the story about Otis charming all the animals. I was collecting stories for her. I would also tell her about Miss Franny and the bear and about meeting Gloria Dump and believing for just a minute that she was a witch. I had a feeling that these were the kind of stories my mama would like, the kind that would make her laugh out loud the way the preacher said she liked to laugh. Alright, that is chapter 12 of Because of Winn-Dixie. Next, we are going to focus on the vocabulary for this chapter. So go ahead and get out your vocabulary packets. And we're still at the bottom of the second page that says chapters 10 through 14. And the word that we're going to work on today is spell. All right. So see, go ahead and do a little word search and see if you can find the word spell in chapter 12. All right, so see if you can find the word spell. I'm not going to help you this time trying to find it and use the context clues. All right, I want to see if you can do it yourself. But I will go over the word spell with you. So in the book, it kind of talked about how Otis kind of cast a little spell on the animals and that he was able to charm them real easily with his music. So they were able to get really quiet and not act so crazy like they were when he stopped playing music. All right. So see if you can define the word spell in the way that Otis kind of cast a spell with his music on the other animals, all right? So see what you can come up with for that word, and then we'll go over it together. Ooh. All right, so the definition of the word spell is to cast a magical effect on someone or something. All right, so for example, I'm gonna try to put this so you can see the whole thing. Okay, so for example, Otis put a, or cast a spell, all right? He didn't actually use magic, but the way that he played his music, all of the animals were very soothed by it, or whatever it did, it had a magical effect on them 
to where it made them feel a certain way, it made them act a certain way, um, a way that's normally out of their character, which means it's not a normal act for them. Alright, so if you want to pause the video to define the word spell, this is our only vocabulary word for today. So, we've only done two so far, so you don't have to try to figure out any other words by yourself, it's just this word for today, alright? What we're going to do next is go over an, um, a character. We're going to do Otis today for our character traits, alright? So, yesterday we did Preacher, and today we're going to do Otis, alright? So I'm going to erase my board real quick, and we're going to do what we always do. Come up with a couple facts, um, information that we know is true about that person. And then we're going to try to come up with some character qualities that match those facts. Alright, so we have Otis. Think about a couple of things that happened specifically in this chapter that we know for a fact. Alright, so one is Otis played his guitar to kind of soothe the animals. See if you can think of another one while I finish writing this out. Alright, here's our first one. Okay, another one that you might be thinking about is Otis feels bad for the animals being stuck in cages. Because remember, he said that he was a criminal. And he had been in jail at one point. We don't know what for. He didn't say. But it said that he felt bad because he knew what it was like to be stuck in a box or to be stuck in a little cell. And so he felt bad for the animals that they were in that same position that he was once in. So he feels bad that animals have to be left in cages. If you can think of other facts about him, that's awesome. I'm only going to use these two just because I'm running out of room on my whiteboard. Um, but if you have other facts and you're able to think of other character qualities for those, that's awesome. Keep it up. Alright. Now that we have our facts, let's see if we can think of any character qualities that might go with them. Alright. So we have, the first one is Otis playing his guitar to soothe the animals. So maybe one you might say is, he, you could say he's talented, he's able to play the guitar very well, so well that the animals are kind of entranced or kind of spelled, you know, our vocabulary word, I lost my thing, but spell is our vocabulary word today, he can kind of cast a spell on them. So maybe you could say talented, you could also say um, a musician. Alright, those are some words, let me put these in parentheses, parentheses, that way we know. Talented musician, those are two words that you could use for the first one. If you want to focus on the other one though, Otis feels bad that the animals are in cages. One word that comes to mind for me um, is that em he's empathetic, which means, it's a big word. And you might have heard it before, but empathetic just means that you understand what someone is going through. So let's say, for example, let's say you've played soccer before and you lost a game one time. Well, let's say you went to watch your friend play soccer and they lost a game and they're really sad and they're really upset. Well, you could empathize or be empathetic with them because you've gone through that same thing and you know what it's like to lose a game. And you know that it doesn't feel that great, so you would be able to comfort them and to help them with how you got over how you lost the game, all right? So for example, Otis can be empathetic with the animals because he knows what it's like to be locked up in a cage and he knows that it's not fun. You can't go anywhere, you can't really do anything, you're just there, all right? So that's one word we can use. Another word that we can use is caring, all right? He wants to be able to give the keep smearing my words. All right. Here we go. There we go. All right. You know that he feels bad for the animals and he cares for them and he wants to give them um, 
freedom. So he takes them out every morning and play the, plays the guitar for them because he feels bad that they're stuck in those cages all day. So those are words that you can use. And remember to have page numbers, all right? So maybe go back in your text and just in one sentence say on page, let's say it was 82. Otis shows that he is empathetic because he understands what it's like to be in a cage. All right, that's an example of what you can do. Again, this isn't for a grade, it's just something extra that we can do to keep practicing our reading skills. Um, and it's fun to kind of dig deep into those characters and figure out more about them. Even though it doesn't specifically say, you know, Otis is empathetic, Otis is caring. They show us through his actions that he, he is those character qualities. So it's fun to kind of be detectives and decipher that out for ourselves. All right, the last thing I wanna go over are the questions that relate with our chapter, all right? So we have chapters 11 through 15. We're almost halfway through this book, which is crazy, all right? These are the questions that are due this Friday, just these eight questions. Remember to be answering them in complete sentences as well as having page numbers, all right? Because I want to know that you guys can use textual evidence or use the text to support your answers, okay? So that's what we've been working on all semester, make sure we can find page numbers that support our answers. Today you only have one question, all right, and that's just question three. So it says, why does Otis play music for the animals in the pet shop? And we've already kind of discussed this, but if you have to, go back in the text. It's just question three that goes with our chapter today, all right? So if you want, you can go back in the text to figure that out. Um, think about what Otis has gone through and why he plays the music for them, all right? He says in the text why he does it, all right? So make sure you use that. Make sure you have a page number and complete sentence. And if you guys have any questions, just message me or Mrs. Program. Um, and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your Tuesday.